All right, well, this video is in response to a comment on the working with menus lemur video. Someone asked about the best way to create a script that could handle double clicks on a fader. And it was an interesting question to me. I hadn't really thought about even doing that before. Um, they already had some code themselves, but I wanted to start from scratch and see what I could come up with. Um, I do not claim that this is the best way to do it. I don't know that there is necessarily a best way to do it. Um, but just a warning, this video is uh, a lot more complicated scripting-wise than other videos have been so far. So this is not, this is definitely not a beginner video, um, but let me show you how it works. So first of all, everything is actually self-contained within this fader. And by the way, this could also be used for other, you know, other types of controls, but I just made it on a fader. So I started out by kind of thinking what's involved in a double click, you know, like really every single step you have the mouse goes down, the mouse goes up, the mouse goes down, and the mouse goes up again. And that all happens within a certain period of time. So we needed some way to handle that. Um, the time variable, which we haven't talked about before, but the time variable is something that Lemur has built in. Uh, it's kind of this constantly running clock once every, I think, 60th of a second or something like that. And uh, it's something that you can use to tell the difference in time between one event happening and another event happening. So I thought, well, that's probably useful. And then the other thing I thought to use was, uh, we have talked about the Z variable before. The Z variable is useful to know if a control is being pressed currently or not. And if you could somehow keep track of like when it's being pressed and then let go once and then pressed again and then let go once, then I thought maybe you could use those things to, uh, to detect a double click. So we have four variables, one that keeps track of each step of the double click. We have tap one, tap one release, tap two, and tap two released. And uh, you probably saw up at the top, we have our double tap time. This is our threshold, like 0 0.4 means 0 0.4 seconds. The double tap has to complete within that amount of time in order to count as a double tap. Uh, the current time variable will see be used in scripts in just a second. And uh, okay, so then I broke it up into three different scripts just because it was getting to be kind of a mess all in one script. So the double tap script is the simplest one. It calls the double tap handler script, which we'll go over in a second. Um, it executes whenever Z changes at all, whether it's changing from zero to one or one to zero, it's gonna execute this. Uh, so like I say, it runs this custom script and then a part of this script winds up setting tap two released as the final step and you know that's the final step in a double in a double tap, right? So if tap two released is set to one, it means that a double tap successfully completed. And so whatever actions you want to put in here, this is where they would go. So before we get into the details of double tap handler, let me just show you it in action here. I'm gonna hold the E on the keyboard. Keep track of these things at the bottom. I've got all these variables set up in monitors. Tap one monitor, there's the released, two monitor, two released. And then if we complete successfully complete a double tap then this turns into a one as well. So I'm going to take it really slowly to show you what happens when I when I exceed the time of each step. So I'll press down. Oops, first of all, let me just reset this first. All right, everything's zero. So I'll press down, tap one, monitor changes to one. But then if I let go now, everything goes back down to zero because it was way too long. If I press and release once within the amount of time that we've specified in our double tap time threshold, then they don't immediately go back down to zero, and that's actually okay. The reason they don't is because there's no script that's executing on every frame. Everything is just executing based on Z changing. And so for all the fader knows, like we completed that first part of the double tap within the allotted time. So the fader doesn't know that we're not gonna complete the second part in the allotted time. So there's really nothing to trigger those variables to go back to zero until another click on the fader. Um, but as you'll see in a second, one of the first things the fader does when you tap it is to check if that time has been exceeded. And if it has, it just resets everything anyway. So it, it doesn't matter that these stay as one. It won't cause the next click to become a double click. So, all right, so we've gotten to the first two. Let's do click, up, click, all within the time. Click, up, click. All right, so we got to the third stage, but then now if I release, again, they go back down to zero, and that's possible because the release is a trigger which runs a script which can then go and check that the time's been 
you know, exceeded, which means these all go back down to zero. And then finally, click up, click up. Okay, I was still too slow. Click up, click up. Okay, I, I took out the code actually that resets this to that sets this to one if it if it completes. But you can see that it moved to the correct spot. If I want to put that code back in there, it's easy enough. I can just say uh, double tap complete equals one. And then now we can see when a double tap completes, then that goes to one. And uh, x also gets set to 0 0.5, just like we we wanted it to. OK, so um, because, so anyway, here we go. Here's the double tap handler code. But because the code is so hard to read in here, it's going to be, it would be a pain to explain. So I've gone ahead and written it up in, uh, in text edit. Oops, I forgot to color that last bit. Oh, well. Anyway, I've gone ahead and written it up in here. Um, and we'll go through the steps in here. And maybe I've way overdone it, but uh, we'll see. OK, so the first thing that this does is it resets the double taps. Now, what that means is that it, that reset double taps, which we'll also go in over in a second, that checks to see whether the threshold has been exceeded. And if it has, it just resets everything. So if that's the case, if at the time that we make our first click, the time has already been exceeded, then everything's going to get reset. OK, so our first click. Uh, sorry if I read some of this stuff. I wrote it out because it's going to be easier to explain if I just read what I've written here. So if a touch is currently taking place, right, z equals 1 when you put your finger on the iPad or when you click your mouse, z turns to 1, and no potential double click has begun yet. Tap 1 equals 0. So if, if a double click had begun already, if we'd already been partway through the process, tap 1 would already be set to 1, which you'll see in a second. All right, so we know that this is our very first click. And so we're going to save the current time. So that's going to be the beginning of our double click. And that's going to be what we compare to the time variable. And again, that's done over in the uh, reset double taps script. OK, so after we save the current time, then we're going to update tap 1 to be 1. So now we've, we've made a record that uh, a tap has begun, or a potentially a double tap has begun. All right, so what's happening next? If a touch is not currently taking place, so remember, once we let go, z goes back down to 0. So now this is stage 2, right? Mouse up on the first click. z goes back down to 0, and tap 1 has already been set to 1, which would have happened when we first touched the screen, or first touched the fader. And if tap 2 has not been set to 1, so, I mean, you can read this here if you want to, but um, it was a problem when I first was doing this because this the final step wouldn't happen. I couldn't get the, the second uh, mouse release to work. And that was because it was actually getting stuck in this step because um, in the mouse release code, we're also checking if Z has just changed to zero and also checking if tap two, if tap two is equal to one. But by the time you get here, Z is equal to zero and tap one is already equal to zero. So if you don't have this here, then it never gets to the stage because by the time you're letting go of the second click, this is already true. And so it would just kind of get stuck in this code. So I had to add this to make sure that um, this will only execute this section if tap 2, which gets set in the third stage, obviously, uh, has not been set yet. Hopefully that made sense. Um, OK, so for this stage, uh, stage 2, stage 3, and stage 4 of the click, uh, for all of them, we need to check and see if we've exceeded our threshold of time. And we do that by running the same script that we had at the top, this uh, reset double taps. Uh, reset double taps returns a 1 if uh, the time has been exceeded. And so if that's true, then we're just going to go ahead and return, uh, get out of this script, and, and the double click process is not going to happen. OK, so next, uh, tap 1 released equals 1. So just like we had tap 1 equals 1, now we're 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 marking the fact that tap 1 has now been successfully released. And because it got here, it means that it was released within a reasonable amount of time. So we have record of that. So that variable is now set to 1. All right, stage 3. So if, once again, now we're clicking, uh, if z equals 1, well, that could be either the first click or the second click. So we need to check for something else. If z equals 1 and if tap 1 has already been released. So in this case, we want to make sure that we've already clicked once. And we've made record of that with tap 1 being released, set to 1. Um, once again, like I said, we're going to check if too much time has elapsed. And if it has, we'll exit out of the script. If 
it hasn't, then we'll go ahead and set tap2 equal to 1 to mark the fact that our second tap has begun. All right, and this is the final stage, stage 4, the release of the second click. So once again, if z is 0 and if uh, tap2 has begun, tap2 was set to 1 up here, then once again, maybe we've done the click up, click, and then held too long, right? That's this case. So if too much time has passed, then once again, we're going to exit the script. But if it's still within that threshold time, then we get we have success, right? So tap 2 has been released, so we set tap 2 release to 1. Uh, go ahead and reset that current time in preparation for the next click. And then we want to return a value of 1 to indicate that, yes, this was a successful double click. Okay, so that was a lot of explanation, but hopefully I think that was a lot easier than trying to explain it in here. So we have one script left to go. It's much shorter, don't worry. Uh, the reset double taps. So what is that actually doing? Reset double taps. So we're making just a temporary diff variable to keep track of the difference between the current time, with the, sorry, the actual actual current time, like as of the time that this script is being run, and the, quote, current time variable, uh, which represents, I guess I should have called it start time, that would have been more appropriate, but um, that's the one that gets set here in this step, current time equals time originally. So each time reset double taps runs, it's going to go ahead and, uh, it's going to go ahead and take that difference, and then now it's going to check and see if that difference exceeds the double tap time that we have set in this variable up here. Oops, sorry. Um, okay, and if it's, if too much time has gone by, then we're going to reset all of our variables, our tap1, tap1 released, tap2, tap2 released, uh, the double tap complete, also going to be set back to zero, current time back to zero, so everything gets reset back to zero. And then here we're returning a one, like I said a while ago, right? So we return one if too much time has gone by, it's failed, uh, you should exit whatever script you're doing because the, du the double tap has taken too long. Um, otherwise, we return 0, and of course, returning 0 means that our if statement in the other script will fail here, and so it'll just continue on because we haven't exceeded our time threshold yet. Okay, so going back to the double tap script that we started out with, uh, hopefully that makes a lot more sense now as to what's going on. So when we run this, it's executing all of that, and we run this every time z changes, and this, this script is the only thing that executes, and it only executes based on Z. So, uh, I don't know, it's a lot of code, but I don't find that it's necessarily a terrible solution. Uh, the nice thing is that it is completely self-contained, so if I copy this and paste it, um, I don't really have to do, I don't have to do any adjustment at all, actually. I can just double tap, and it just works. Uh, I haven't tried it out with any other uh, types of controls yet, but it might be interesting to try out. Anyway, uh, that was fun. A fun way to spend the evening. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.